Hi, my name is Josh Price. I'm the hardware architect for Nebulon. So as CMAC kind of alluded to, there are two key components to cloud-defined storage. On one hand, you have the data plane, which is built upon a piece of hardware that we call a services processing unit, or SPU for short. On the other hand, you have the control plane. That resides entirely in the cloud. Since I'm the hardware guy, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the data plane. So first, let's go through the buying motion for enterprise class servers. So your customer goes to his favorite OEM and he buys his favorite 2U 24 drive industry standard server. Now, when he configures the server, it typically has either a RAID card for local storage or a fiber channel card that connects to the SAN. Now with cloud-defined storage, this buying motion remains exactly the same. He goes to his OEM, he buys his server, but instead of having it configured with a RAID card or a fiber channel card, he has it configured with a services processing unit from Nebulon, or an SPU for short. This SPU is a full length, full height, double width PCIe card that fits nicely into the 2U server and connects to the SSDs at the front of the server, just like a RAID card would, because the SPU has no actual storage of its own. Instead, it uses those SSDs in the server to build either local storage or shared storage within a, that it can then share to other SPUs in the application cluster in what we call an end pod. So now let's double click down into the actual hardware itself. Now this is usually my favorite part of the presentation. If we were all in the room and it wasn't for COVID, I did get to actually pull out my card, pop the lid off and show everybody all the pieces of my little baby that we built. But since we're on Zoom, we'll look at this nice presentation with a nice rendering of the card and talk through it. So if you look at the card itself on the hardware, it has all the pieces that you expect to find in a uh, high-end all-flash um, single controller or single flash storage array. And with this hardware, we actually provide all the um, services that you come to expect from a high-end storage array. Everything from encryption to deduplication and compression, erasure coding, mirroring, snapshots, you have it. Now that's all provided from the hardware, the heart of which is an eight core, three gigahertz ARM processor. That processor has two integrated uh, DDR4 memory buses. Those provide up to 45 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. In addition to the, the eight cores on the processor, there's also offload engines that help with things like encryption and deduplication. And there's a crypto authentication ASIC from microchip. That ASIC, along with the um, encryption engines, are used to build a zero trust token-based security triangle between the SPU, the Nebulon cloud, and the administrator. Now that's a topic all in itself, and I'm not the expert on that, so I'm gonna leave that one for Michael, one of my colleagues, to handle later on in the presentation. The SOC has eight lanes of PCI, or sorry, 16 lanes of PCIe that connects to an onboard SAS IOC as well as provides the connectivity between the, um, between the actual card and the host server. Out the back of the card, you'll find two connectors that provide 12 lanes of high-speed storage I.O. Those connect to either SAS, SATA, or NVMe SSDs. And then finally, out the front of the card, you see two integrated 10 gig or 25 gig NICs. Those are part of the SOC. They're not actually seen by the host server at all. It's used entirely for the SPU to talk to other SPUs in the MPOD and share data and metadata. You'll also see that there's a one gig management port. That port's used for us to connect to the Nebulon cloud. So I'm gonna stop right here. I've kind of covered a lot. If there's any questions from the folks in the audience. Okay, and if not, I'll go ahead and move on. Um, we do have a lot to cover, and we also have a pretty extensive demo at the end of the presentations here that we want to make sure we get to. Um, so as you probably surmise, we're a scale-out architecture. So, uh, Josh, this is Ray. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the SAS connections that are out, out the back of the card? Is that like I'm connecting SAS drives directly, or do I have to go to a SAS card? Or uh, good, good point. So, so the SAS card is actually embedded on, on our card itself. We have a SAS IOC. Um, and that has the SAS connections that come out these connections, and they're actually tri-mode connections. So if you're not familiar with tri-mode, what tri-mode is is that the same wire the card can actually run is native SATA at 6 gig, as native SAS at 12 gig, or native NG NVMe. So with that, we can connect either directly to the back plane within the server that has the drives housed, or you can connect to a SAS expander within the server that then connects to either SAS or SATA drives. All right, thanks. Sure. 
Okay, as I've mentioned, we're a scale out architecture. So if you need to get more performance uh, or storage in your application, you simply add more nodes with more SPUs in them. And, and let's say you want to just scale out more um, performance for your application, but you don't need additional storage. We also support the ability to scale out with just an SPU and a server, but no storage, and then just use the shared storage that your NPOD is providing. At GA, we plan to support up to 32 SPUs in an NPOD that will enable us to get to petabytes of usable storage. Now, when you think about the SPU, try not to think about it as an accelerator card. You know, we have some other vendors out there that sell cards that look a bit like the SPU that go into a server and they accelerate software that runs on the, on the server itself. So they're accelerating whether it's storage, networking, what have you. With the SPU, we're different. We're a complete offload engine. We're offloading the entire storage stack on the SPU itself. So we're providing all the storage services, all the data efficiency stuff, the deduplication, compression, thin provisioning. We're doing all the data protection, the encryption, the erasure coding, snapshots, replication. In fact, even on the encryption, we're providing end-to-end -end encryption. So not only do you get data at rest, but the data is actually being encrypted when it comes into the card. It's encrypted out to 25 gigabit ports to all the other SPUs, and it's being encrypted to the drives. Um, so it's so a full end-to-end -end encryption, actually. Uh, and this is all done with no software dependency whatsoever on the host, zero software footprint. In fact, from the host perspective, our card looks simply like a SAS HVA. So you can use the standard, or we do use the standard inbox uh, drivers provided by every major OS and every hypervisor to talk to our card. And because of this, because we don't actually have software running on the server itself, we actually give resources back to the server when compared to like a software-defined solution because we're not using anything on the server, the server net now has more um, CPU cycles, more networking, more memory that it can then provide to do either more VMs or more application performance. Now, the other thing that's maybe not completely obvious is that the card itself is its own fault domain within the server. And what that means is the server can go down and our card stays up. Now, we, we can't handle a power loss, of course. If a power, power goes out, our, our card's going to shut down cleanly, save all your data, and make sure it's all there when you come back up. But usually that's not what happens. You know, usually the server goes down because you're doing routine maintenance on it that requires a reboot or you blue string a crash or what have you. Well, in that case, our card's still up. It still has access to all the SSDs in the server, and it can still provide data to all the other cards in your NPOD. And probably just as important, when that server comes back up, because our cards have been running the entire time, uh, we haven't had to break any mirrors. The RAID, uh, RAID set is completely in sync, so there's no long delay waiting for mirrors to resync or RAID sets to rebuild. So this slide just kind of pulls everything all together. Um, here you'll see that we have multiple end pods, all with SPUs in them, up to 32, as I mentioned. These uh, SPUs all talk to each other over our own um, Ethernet network. It's not a SAN. It doesn't require a custom SAN. It's just a standard Ethernet network. Um, and they're all sharing data across each other. Um, you'll also see that there's a one gig management port that connects up to the Nebulon cloud. And that's where all the management for the card actually takes place. Um, you know, all the data services, all the data protection, everything that's done on the card, all the stuff I've described, but all the stuff the customer sees, the way they interface with the card, the way they manage it, maybe they look at all the data that comes from the card, that's in the cloud. That's where all the magic happens. And is there a, sorry, yeah. is there a, a limit to the amount of uh, NPOT clusters that I can have? Uh, no, no, not at all. As far as being managed, um, my colleague can talk about that more, but no, we're in fact, we're designed to manage at scale. So when, when uh, Michael gets into this, you'll see that you can manage all of the end pods in your data center all from the cloud. I have a question. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, the end pod servers uh, has, have the, the card and then you have an hypervisor on us on top. Do you have customer using uh, uh, your solution just to build storage, shared storage. I mean, build a uh, an, a, a semi-traditional array with your cards built out of you know commodity hardware and your card. No, I mean the intention of this card is exactly as kind of I described is the applications running on the server, whatever that application may be, and we're actually providing the shared storage for use of that application. Okay. Uh, and, and that may be built from, you know, storage within that server and then other SPUs or just from all from other SPUs. But we're not building an actual SAN, per se. We're enabling an application cluster. Okay. Very good. Okay, before we start up again, can you tell me, is the efficiency domain 
all the cards combined or is it only the storage directly connected to that one SPU? The efficiency domain is the SPU. Thank you. Now the protection domain is across the SPUs. And, then, and uh, that's ran within, of course, too. Like, you know, we have ray, uh, erasure coding and that kind of stuff within the card and then mirroring across. So I have a quick question. Um, a couple of slides back, um, it's a PCI Express 316 card, but uh, you were using eight lanes. H how are you getting enough bandwidth to do everything you're trying to do from eight lanes? So eight lanes of Gen 3 is six gigabytes of bandwidth. That's what goes out to the card itself, I mean, to the server itself. And six gigabyte bandwidth for the applications that we're providing is... But, but remember that the network doesn't use an additional PCIe. So let's just think about what that PCIe is used with. The SOC has the, has the NICs embedded within it, right? So it's got bandwidth directly to the processor itself. So those 225 gig uh, connections have full access to all the, uh, all the processors, all the offload engines, all of the memory controllers. It's just the PCIe is used for two purposes, to go out to the server in which we provide six and a half gigabytes of bandwidth, which is enough for the server to consume because it's only a single server, single application. And then the other bit goes out to the SAS IOCs that then talk to the SSDs on the back end. Okay, so there's eight lanes going out to the, the SSDs, but surely if you're doing compression, dedupe, efficiencies, other management, the, the, the bandwidth becomes a bottleneck of what you can achieve from the media. It will. You're right. You're right. I mean, but 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 still remember that most of that work is being done within the SOC. Um, the SOC has the offload engine. It has the memory. It has 45 gigabytes of memory bandwidth there. Uh, it still has to empty that onto the disks. So the transport between the SPU and the disk is the bottleneck for the system. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? So, so I was saying it still has to offload everything it's doing back to the media at some point. So it the does. bandwidth between it the card... Does. And the media is the bottleneck. That's true. That, that is going to be the bandwidth. You can have a lot more uh, limitation. You can have a lot more disk, raw bandwidth to the disk than you would have coming into your SOC. That, that, that's very true. It's a, it's a good point that you bring up. It's, it's similar to a lot of solutions. Uh, I was um, just but, wondered why it wasn't PCI Express 4, which oh, is... Yeah, good question, which would double your bandwidth. So we looked at that when we chose our SOC. To be honest, we, we talked to all the OEMs and kind of figure out which servers that we wanted to target. Um, and at the time, and as they are still now that we're releasing, all the servers are all still Gen 3 based servers. So we just thought it made sense to choose a Gen 3 based SOC that has a proven track record. Don't, don't worry, we have cards in the work right now that, uh, that we'll be using Gen 4 um, that fit into other servers. So there's a lot of ongoing work. Just to be clear, uh, there is the PCIe that is connecting the card to the host, but the card itself has a separate PCIe domain that is connected to the CPU on the card. So, so the, the backend media is connected via a separate PCIe domain that connects to our, to our CPU, right? So the bandwidth that is consumed talking to the backend media does not compete with the bandwidth that is consumed talking to the host. 